Long ago, in a not so far away land, hidden by ancient magics and clouds of fog, a young witch was born into a very, very magical household, the home of the North Star family. Ariel North Star was born the daughter of an infamous alchemist witch father and a famous mad scientist fairy mother. Her father, Darian North Star, son of a witch, was also part of the infamous North Star family, whose magic lineage stretched back far into history and was full of stories of ancient and powerful witches, wizards, warlocks, and magical heroes and villains of all types. Unfortunately for the North Stars, their fame and magic power had dimmed over the centuries until only Darien was left. Once the North Stars had been some of the most powerful magicians in the world, but they had not been able to keep up with the changing technology of the eras, and most of the family treasures were now piles of ancient, crumbling books and trinkets. Meanwhile, Ariel's mother, the famous mad scientist Gina, spent her time investigating the cutting edge of science and the high-tech possibilities of the future. Unlike her husband, Gina spurred thoughts of most magic, perhaps as a result of being an abandoned fairy child herself, orphaned and left to be raised by two very shrewd human mothers who encouraged her to develop her intelligence. Occasionally, Gina remembered she had wings when they got in the way of her lab coat, but as her studies went on, she grew increasingly dismissive of magic and insistent that technology could do all magic could and better. And of course, both Darian and Gina fully expected their daughter, Ariel, to follow in their footsteps. Meaning, of course, Darian expected Ariel, his only child of magical blood, to follow his footsteps and deepen her connection to the magical realm carrying on the last of the North Star blood and protecting their grand history. And on the other hand, Gina was convinced their daughter would follow in her footsteps, dismissing the waste of wand waving that magic was, and joining her mother in carrying out high-tech cloning experiments as a world-class scientist. As time went on, and it became clear that Ariel was the only North Star child to display both magic and a naturally brilliant mind quick to soak up complicated science, well, things began to become heated in the North Star household. We won't delve too deeply into what a fight between a stubborn alchemist warlock and his equally hot-tempered fairy mad scientist wife looks like, but suffice to say, the results regularly turned people into toads, sent flying robotic fish after hapless family members, and nearly destroyed the house between magic potions going awry and science experiments blowing up the roof on a regular basis. Worst of all, however, was the fighting. Ariel's parents had once been deeply in love, but ambition and self-centered stubbornness can change a person more than any magic spell. Now they spent all their time fighting over Ariel and her future, neglecting their studies, neglecting the other children, and neglecting each other as they sought to secure their own legacy through their daughter. Ariel herself couldn't even make up her mind. She loved both her parents, and she loved both her magical inheritance and her passion for science. But Darian and Gina simply wouldn't hear of Ariel walking both paths in the world. She was meant to follow magic or science, one or the other, forever or else. So Ariel did the only reasonable thing. As soon as her fateful 18th birthday arrived, in which she was to make a decision about which path she would follow for the rest of her life, she vanished. 
tired of living a life caught between two paths and wrapped up in the intense drama of her magical hometown, Ariel set out for a new life. One where she could walk any path she chose and make a name for herself without the shadows of her parents' expectations forever looming over her. But will it really be that easy to escape the long history of the land that she's left? And without the vast wealth and powerful influence of her family, will Ariel really find she can make her way alone in the world to become the best of anything her heart desires? gosh, this is beautiful. Oh, good gravy. Oh my, oh, there's the little fairy greenhouse. There it is. Oh, that's so pretty. It reminds me so much of the fairy greenhouse that we had in The Sims 3. Oh, that's beautiful. And just look at the water. Ah, ah, this is so amazing. Oh my gosh, look at the pretty trees. Look at the crystals. Oh, look at those crystals. They're so big. I cannot wait to get my hands on those in debug mode. That is going to be fantastic. But oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, shooting stars. Oh my gosh, a swirling vortex. Okay. Whew. Okay. Oh, new plant. New plant. New plant. We're going to we're going to carry on. Oh, look at the crystal. We're going to carry on in just a moment, my friends, with Ariel Northstar and her new adventures. I just need one more moment. <gasps> So just admire, oh, look at the bridge to just admire how beautiful this realm is. Wow, oh, and look at the waterfalls and the new plants. Oh, I knew I saw some beautiful wisteria plants in all of those trailers. Am I really here? Like I kind of, oh, ooh, I love the way they've set up those rotten tree stumps. Okay, okay, come on, Siri. First thing you do every time is get distracted by the plants, but I, oh, the really cool, look at those glowing orb things. Ah, oh, those lamps look awesome. Oh, oh my gosh, is this another new tree? This is another new tree. I know this tree is new, maybe. Or it could be a swamp tree, but I don't recognize it, so I assume this tree could be new. Whew, okay, okay, I think we're good. All right, but all right, everyone. Hello and welcome to the new chapter of the North Star Legacy. As you guys saw in the beginning, this is Ariel North Star, who is the daughter of two of my favorite Sims from our North Star Legacy, Darian North Star and his wife, Gina. As I mentioned, Darian is a son of a witch, and he actually has many magical children, but the only one who ended up having any magic skills like he did is Ariel right here. And Ariel is also the daughter of Gina, who is a mad scientist who happens to be a fairy who discounts magic and uh, is actually quite afraid of it under all of her huff and bluff about it. And, uh... You know, Gina was very excited to have a daughter who would follow after her footsteps at getting rid of all of that worthless wand waving and focusing on the deeper thrill of science and the cutting edge of mad science. And uh, Ariel found herself caught between her two parents and they were getting so extreme and so dramatic with their demands that as soon as her 18th birthday arrived and she was supposed to pick between going to a very ancient and extremely, extremely traditional wizard uh, college where she also would have a arranged marriage to keep the bloodlines of magic going strong waiting for her. Or she was supposed to pick between an alien world where she would be sent off in order to learn the latest in science as long as she promised to completely discount all of her magical skills and forget that she has magic tingling in her blood. 
And those were the choices her parents gave her, and they became more and more firm in their insistence that she had to pick one path or the other, until today, on her 18th birthday, Ariel has run away. And she has run to this realm, this beautiful, beautiful magic realm. Oh my gosh, look at this academy. This is amazing. She has actually left and she is far, far away from home at an academy that has quite the reputation, both good and bad, for teaching various magics. And magic is actually where Ariel is going to start, but her heart is caught between both magic and science. And you're going to be seeing a lot of steampunk action as we have our mad scientist witch, which is going to be Ariel, really take forth like the journey that she wants to go with her life and create quite the story. So that's kind of the whole gist of it, my friends. Ariel is a runaway. She is now an adult. The first thing she did with her adult skills was get herself out of there. She has absolutely no money, but she does have a very special place that she could potentially live if she had to stay in the human realm. But since she ran away, she thought that getting out of the human realm would be the most uh, responsible thing to do. Her mother might be able to track her if she had no resources to help hide her trail after all. So to make sure her parents don't find her, she has come to this realm, where she hopes that she will be able to appeal to the sages who work here and become one of their students. Little does she know that there is always a trade-off when it comes to magic, and since she has no money, she has no fame, she has no family to support her being here at the academy, she's going to have to uh, become basically the servant of the sages, depending on which one she picks and depending on how the magic shall develop. So we've got quite a fun story ahead of us, and I'm very excited to see where she goes. I did just want to really quickly say, this is not the lot that you actually start Magic Realm with. This is from Sims on the Rope, who made a new academy. It's glorious. I haven't even really glanced inside. I just knew as soon as I saw his post on Twitter that that was where I wanted to begin my Magic Realm adventure. And I actually downloaded the sages that he had available and replaced the sages that come with Magic Realm. So you're going to see a little bit of an upgraded version of this experience, as I too have this experience for this first time with you. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so we're going to go inside, and this place is actually set up to kind of be a little bit like a dormitory, where you could actually stay here, you could sleep here. So I'm going to imagine that we could actually have one of the rooms here. Oh my gosh, this place is huge. Look at it. Look at it. Oh my gosh. But I'm going to imagine that we could get a dormitory room here, but we might run some sort of fee. Like maybe every week she has to turn in so many simoleons or perhaps sacrifice some of her own skills and offer them up in trade. Maybe even some of her memories. Whatever it is that the magically inclined sims want as payment for allowing a stray who refuses to give her name, her background, and her history, but who does have a lot of magic in her veins, to be here where she will hopefully train with some of the masters of magic. This is so cool. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is so pretty. <gasps> a cauldron. The very first time I'm looking at a cauldron. Oh, look at the crystal pieces under it. Am I really here? Like, I have been waiting for this to come for so long. I feel like I need to pinch myself. I, this is very difficult to believe. Oh, look at everybody. <gasps> is she one of the sages? She has a little glowing mark over her head. I wonder who she is. Oh, wow. Look at the classroom. Oh, this is so fun. <gasps> look, there's another one of the sages. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Oh my gosh, I love this. But all right, so we'll go through the details. Oh, there's another one of the sages. We will go through the details of uh, what we will need to do in order to earn our keep here and hopefully not be thrown back out into the human realm uh, later. For now, let's join Ariel as she begins her first day here in the magic realm, exploring a new land and hopefully uh, hopefully being taken in by the magic masters. Really quickly, just to go through her skills before we get going, uh, Ariel is 
you know, she's got a bit of a background. For those of you guys who didn't quite catch it, she is from my Sims 3 legacy to the North Star, which was my supernatural legacy. I very, very much loved it. I highly recommend checking it out if you're ever in the mood to binge some supernatural goodness from Sims 3. I'm actually thinking about maybe streaming and touring and maybe even returning to that family in the future. But for now, we're going to stay with Ariel in The Sims 4 because she's had enough of her parents' nonsense and she wants a new life. And so she's just, she's out. She's not going to have anything to do with them anymore unless they chase her down. But that's a whole nother issue. But Ariel is a genius perfectionist. Those are both traits that she actually had in The Sims 3 as a child. She got both of those from really working very hard as a child. And I changed a few of her traits because I figured running away is a very dramatic thing. So she is actually hot-headed. These Sims tend to be angry, can rile up other Sims, and become angry when targeted with mischief. And she's quite hot-headed because she is very infuriated by the behavior of her family and really the behavior of a lot of the magic families and people in the land that she used to live in. I mean, she was almost going to be pushed into a magic marriage just to be able to have magically inclined babies and a strong bloodline. So she doesn't have a lot of patience for people who seem to push their kids around, who act like magicians are better than everyone else, who act like it's appropriate to make jokes about how strong the blood is in your family. She has zero patience for that, and she's still really hurt about what her parents did to her, about making her have to pick between them. That's just cruel. And trying to dictate her life and tell her what path she could take, very cruel. And I don't think Darian or Gina really stopped because they were both very kind of self-absorbed sims and asked themselves, what's really best for Ariel? They were so caught up in the fact that they lived so long as magical creatures, fairies for an extremely long time, and Darian, with his potions of immortality, kept resetting his age all the time, that I don't think either of them really gave a lot of thought to anything beyond their legacy by some point. Ariel saw firsthand how being obsessed one way or the other could really, really cause a lot of problems. Oh, look at the magic graves! Oh my gosh! And she doesn't want to follow in that that footstep. So she has a lot of anger issues. She has a lot of things that she needs to work through. And she wants to be able to create her own legacy where she can really go and become the best at what she wants to do. And for her, that is both science and that is both magic. And now she kind of just wants to become the best of it to sort of show her parents like, forget you guys, I was able to do it both. But she also has some other traits because she is a sim from My Sims 3 story, so I figured it would be fine to give her some extra benefits of that. She is mentally gifted uh, because she was a very smart whiz kid, so she is going to build adult mental skills faster. She is also a speed reader because she was quite the bookworm as a child. She always had a book in her hand and she was always working very hard to make sure that she could do everything that it took in order to get perfect grades and please both her parents in any of the classes that she was in, be it magic or science related. She is a quick learner because she has the knowledge aspiration, which we'll get into in a second. And to balance all of that out, because I thought, you know, that's a little OP, making her start off so brilliant and smart, even if she is. We did also give her the insensitive trait from having negative empathy. So that's a childhood trait that your child sims can earn, and I, get, I went ahead and I gave it to her. Insensitive sims are able to question others' negative sims' emotions. They can also instigate other sims. Insensitive sims will have a higher chance of failing socially when talking to sims with bad emotions. And I gave her the uncontrolled emotions. Sims with uncontrolled emotions won't be able to relieve their negative emotions as fast as other sims. When they have strong negative emotions, they may have an emotional meltdown. So I gave her those traits because I figured it, uh, it reflects how she is facing a lot of conflict. She grew up in a household that really didn't see her as a person of her own will. She really felt neglected in a lot of ways, and she has a lot of anger issues that she needs to resolve as she tries to find her way in the world and maybe a family she can really call her own. And finally, we do have a few skills for her. 
we have herbalism, logic, and vampire lore, because I figure just a, a little tiny dabble in all of those areas would represent things that she did learn from growing up in a powerful magic household. And she does have the spellcraft and sorcery aspiration right now because it's brand new and I want to play with it. She needs to become a spellcaster. She needs to travel to the magic realm, which we have done as she has escaped here to make sure that she stays out of the human realm for a while. And she needs to learn a spell. So that's going to be really fun, but it won't be the only thing we have. We will also be working with her on nerd brain because that one does require getting to level 10 of the logic skill and having a rocket ship. And that's going to go very well hand in hand with the steampunk twist we're gonna have with Ariel, where she is going to be into both magic and science. So all right, Whew. the required episode one ramble to update you guys about the depth of story. And I'm so excited to see her because this is a precious, precious sim of mine who has come from a one of my very, very first sim series. Oh, now that that's out of the way, let's get going. All right, Ariel. I don't even know which sim I would want to run into first. <gasps> Look at those plants. Oh, that's so pretty. Sims on the Rope did such a... <gasps> Good job with these, you guys, look at the lamps. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Holy cow, look at those glowing pieces. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. And there's Sims walking by. <gasps> look at this lamp. Holy cow, this is so gorgeous. I wonder if we go inside, where is she going? Don't, don't play Sims forever. Uh, I wonder if we come inside, if we can see which one of the sages might approach her first, if anyone. All right, let's have her go here. Oh, there's even a little pet bed for your familiars. <gasps> familiars, familiars. Ariel, we are gonna have to get you a familiar. I wonder if we should introduce ourselves to each of the three sages first. Uh, this woman's not a sage, but I like her hat. Uh, all right, so spellcraft and sorcery. We'll go ahead, maybe view this while we wait. Oh, and ooh, bind a familiar. Oh, that's so cool. That's how you can bind familiars. Oh my gosh. This, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Can we go ahead and like give a friendly introduction? Because he's like the very first. Well, I don't know if she'd be super friendly right now. I, well, maybe. That's the first spellcaster we've seen. I'll go ahead and let her introduce herself. All right. So she needs to. We've traveled to the magic realm. Become a spellcaster. First things first. You need to be. Oh, we got ignored by that guy. Oh, there goes one of the sages. Where are we headed off to now? I don't know, but we'll go ahead and follow her. I think everybody's off. I guess maybe she wants to talk to this sage first. Okay, let's try to head her off and figure out where she's going. <gasps> I love the placement of the Strangerville plant right there. Oh, look at the dining hall. This is fantastic. I love everything about this. All right, become a spellcaster. First things first, you need to become a spellcaster. Seek out the help of a sage in the magic realm to learn about magic and eventually, uh, contemplate big picture for a second. That seems like a good thing to do. As we try to figure out how we become brave enough to talk to someone. Uh -huh. Seek out the help of a sage in the magic realm to learn about magic and eventually perform the rite of ascension. Okay, so I think that would give us the magic ability. And then we need to learn a spell. The spellcaster's journey would not be complete without access to an arsenal of varied potent spells. Search for tomes in the magic realm or ask powerful spellcasters to teach you their secrets. Good luck. All right, so that's exciting. When she's done contemplating the big picture, let's come on in here and then we're gonna actually change this to classical, there we go. Oh look, there's one of the, oh my gosh, here's one of the, the sages and he's actually mixing up drinks of all things, but he's over here in the main area next to this amazing look at all of those crystals. Crystals are one of my favorite things, so this is pretty cool. Oh my gosh, there's even little toys out for like any cats and there's a violin over here. Look at this pile of books. Oh, I love how this place is decorated. All right, let's actually go ahead and change her into her outfit so she can like brush off a little bit. There we go. Looks somewhat magical. So these are her outfits and they are outfits that have come with uh, with Magical Realm. 
And I actually do have the vampire hair on her because it matches so well what Ariel had when she was growing up. Uh, let's show off all three outfits really quickly. Her everydays. I like to imagine this collar has some protective spells already imbued in it. This is not the first time that Ariel has been around magic. She knows that you need to protect yourself. And then finally, the outfit I think we'll have her wear for now. There we go. Look at this cute outfit. Isn't it adorable? A mix of the vampire stuff, the new dress. I think her favorite colors are going to be white, black, and gold. And a couple special pendants. She's wearing one pendant that she actually snagged from her household to add a little bit of a protective spell to try to diffuse being able to find her location in the world. She's hoping it will work as well as, you know, family history said it should. And then she has another set of gemstones on her hand that she actually got from her father's alchemy attic that he had. Darian had a really cool alchemy attic in our Sims 3 series. And uh, she's going to use those in order to try to give herself more protection too. But all right, we've, we've got on quite a bit today. I think she's bumping into this guy as the first sage. I mean, he does seem a little busy. Where is everybody though? Wow. All right, you know what? Why not? He's going to be the first sage that we meet, so let's come over and talk to him. He seems pretty laid back. He's even prepared some, some drinks for different sims. Look at him go! Oh, there goes the other sage! Oh, but look! Maybe he recognizes the look of a little waif who has just recently gained freedom and shows up here Bimby. wanting to learn uh -huh. something. He seems a lot more chill than I thought. This is kind of amazing. All right, so we're talking with him, which is exciting. Ask how to, can we just straight up ask how to use magic? The magical sages are the only spellcasters that can bestow their power onto other sims. Let's not waste any time. Ariel knows what she's here for. Glad to see that the others are all enjoying a good party, but come on, she's serious. Also, I'm gonna try again. Are they dancing to classical like that? <gasps> what the heck? Dude, you can't just like... What? It looks like both the sages are here. Maybe to learn a little bit more about her first. Did you see that? Learning the magical arts is a wonderful and perilous journey. Are you sure you are prepared to become a spellcaster? Oh, she was born ready. Like, literally. <gasps> What? What? She got like a little glow. I wonder if he took her under her wing. In order to bestow the gifts of magic upon you, I will need seven magical moats. I have granted you moat sight in order to see and retrieve them. Search the realm for moats and return to me. Quickly, before the spell wears off. Oh, that's what he did. Temporary moat sight. Oh my gosh, you guys. We're getting evaluated to see if we should become like... A magic member of oh Simon you're so cool a magic member look and there's all the sages of the household this is awesome all right well I think we're gonna go ahead let's introduce ourselves really quickly well yeah we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let Ariel kind of have a moment uh, before oh, magic moats magic moats oh my gosh are they dueling is there a magic there is a magic duel happening in the front yard like, what is even going on? This is kind of amazing. And someone is already speaking to us. Or she's already going to speak to someone as she watches them duel. This guy again. All right, guys. Well, this is very interesting. I'm really going to enjoy figuring out where Ariel is going to go from here. But we have our first quest. And she looks completely confident at being able to tackle that absolutely no problem. So... If you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. If you could, do please leave a like to cheer Ariel on as she begins her independent new journey out in the magic realm. And most importantly, my friends, stay curious. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.